Three, two. We're here at NIM 2022 for Music Player Network. This is Stephen Fortner reporting. I am with Marcus Ryle, who uh, came up as an engineer with Tom Oberheim, uh, is responsible for giving us the ADAT multi track digital recorder, uh, many, many other wonderful things, including leading a um, piano bar sing along back in the, the good old days of <laughs> NAM when the Hilton was a piano bar. Good times. Uh, <laughs> and Marcus put a lot of uh, himself along with Tom into the OBX8. Uh, we know a lot of things about it by now. There's a lot of videos out there, but Marcus is going to tell uh, us about some things he thinks are particularly cool. Ah, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I just thought, I don't, you know, most of you have probably seen lots of demos and sick of me noodling around on this keyboard, but um, Never. I, I thought it might be uh, <laughs> fun to talk about some of the features um, and a little bit of how it works since not many people have had a chance to get their hands on it yet. Um, I, you know, it's obvious that we really wanted to stay faithful to the original layout and all the real-time parameters, um, but a lot of people have asked, like, so how's the page two stuff works? We actually built that into here if you happen to remember which knob did which, like you know that the attack time is going to change the mod delay and so on. But we found that having a display makes it a whole lot easier. So we, we moved the page two button down here and now you simply are able to scroll through. There's actually 41 different parameters. Every single page two parameter that was on the OB8 is there, but a lot of new ones actually starting from the beginning. Um, people have asked like, how did we add oscillator level? The original Oberheims, oscillator one could just be on and off, and oscillator two, there used to actually be two buttons, half and full. Well, instead, we just made them both on off, but you have a level control right here in page two. The very first thing is how, how loud is oscillator one? How loud is oscillator two? And even how loud is the noise? Seems like a pretty basic function, but you know, in the original OBX A and 8, you just had a noise on off. Right. Now you can control the, the level of the noise. So the some of the other hidden features in the OB8, OBX and XA, you only had a single pulse width for both oscillators. On the OB8, we added a hidden feature where you can actually, we'll see if we can, I'll, let me just go to manual mode quickly and set up a sound that we can hear. So if I'm on a pulse wave, obviously this is adjusting the pulse width, but it's adjusting both oscillators at once. So on the OB-8, we made it if you held the pulse button down, you could adjust one or the other, but that's a little inconvenient. So we added to page two separate pulse width controls for oscillator one and oscillator two. So I can... I can just adjust it here, like so. So those are some of the new ones. This is also, on page two, is where we added the where you select which synthesizer you want it to operate as. So I think most people know, obviously, the filters were different uh, on, the, on the units, but it's some of the other differences aren't so obvious. Like here, the oscillator square mode, as it turns out, um, the, the level of the square or pulse waves on the oscillators was different between the OBX and XA versus the OB8. So we let you select that there. Then uh, we added some fun additional cross mod. The OBX was the only of the ones of the series that had cross mod, which we put on a button just like before. And that sawtooth cross modulation of oscillator two to oscillator one is just like it was on the OBX, which also means it's just as almost random as the OBX. It was simply an on-off, and you'd hear differences from voice to voice, which is exactly what happens really here. Really gritty, basic sort of FM. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, because it's it's just exponential FM. I mean, you can, you will, will, let's listen to that real quick. I'll just put up a couple sawtooth waves of the two oscillators, and we'll turn on cross mod. So we, we added, turns out we had an extra VCA to have some fun with. So um, we also added a path where oscillator two 
triangle wave can modulate oscillator one, but you have a variable amount. So I'll turn the, the OBX cross mod off and just use this one. So it's a similar sound, but now we're modulating with a triangle wave. But I, but I have a variable amount, which is a nice feature. There's a lot of goodies. Anyway, there's 41 different pages here, uh, which you can go through. We let you pick how many voices you want to have when you're in unison mode. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you don't necessarily want all eight at once. You can do that. This is also where we put the extra filter types. So on the button, we let you choose the three main instruments. We labeled simply X, which is the original SEM two-pole state variable low-pass filter. What we labeled XA, which is actually the Curtis 3320 filter two-pole, and it was the same in the XA and the 8. And if you put both lights on, it means XA4. That tells you you're on the four-pole Curtis 3320 filter. But down in page two, it also lists those modes, but we added a few goodies, kind of Easter eggs. You've got the high pass filter from. There it is. That's exactly the SEM high pass and the band pass, as well as not. So you can do some LFO stuff and. And the like. So, so there's actually it's not just three different filters. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six different filter types wow. to choose from. Very cool. Wow. Fun, that, huh? That is awesome. I have one question. Yeah. Um, and we'll, we'll cut this if, if the answer is no. Is there a, a voice mode? Because I remember the um, the voice pan pots on the side. Is there a voice mode that lets you? every other voice on the opposite stereo channel, so you get the sort of, who are you intro. Ping pong. Yes. yes. Ab absolutely. So we yeah. put the panning, yeah, you're, yeah, people remember the, the OBX, all three of the OB series were stereo. The OBX and the OBXA, there were pan pots on the inside of the unit. So you actually had to take the screws off the sides, right. open it up, and you could manually pan it. On the OB8, we were bright enough to put the pan pots on the end bell. So we put them sideways yep. and stuck them out, but they're still manual. Here we made it programmable. Um, you can choose to make it so that it's global and static so that every program is the same panning, which would be traditional, or you could change it per program. And the, the, the way we adjusted it, is we basically picked the main pan modes people would want. So the choices are, um, this is, we call it 4L4R. So the first four voices are left and the others are right. This was a common use mode, especially if you were using double programs because you'd want, you might want separate, the two separate sounds to come out separate outputs. Then ping pong, the one you were talking about, this is, this is gonna alternate left, right, left, right with each voice that we play, which you probably won't hear on the video since we're not hooked up in stereo right now. We will be. But you can, here it bounced back and yeah. forth. And then there's also splayed, spread, or mono, of course. And then we have a separate uh, control for how wide do you want it to be. So you can, you can uh, narrow the range if you didn't want it to be as panned as hard. So you have, those are the two parameters to set all your panning uh, per program. Excellent. You can really get all of the retro sounds on the Exactly. Course. Exactly. Well, that's a lot of new things we may have, we may have not heard before. So, yeah. Marcus, I thank you so much. In the next one, we'll do just some direct feed sound demos. Um, but uh, this has been great. We look forward to getting our hands on one person. Awesome.